Welcome to another episode of Tutorials with Ike. So we are going to look at a topic under business finance called investment appraisal. Some people also call it capital budgeting. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, comment, and share. And please do your best to share it with your friends or your classmates if you think it will be helpful to them. And let's get right into today's video. Now, what is investment appraisal? Investment appraisal is simply choosing what to invest your money in. That's all. So in this life, we all have choices. If I give everyone $1 million, everyone who is watching this video, if I give you $1 million, there are things you decide to use your money for. You can decide to buy a car, you might decide to buy a land, a house, I mean anything you want to do. But when it comes to investment appraisal, if you are a finance manager at any company, at a point in time, in case they have a lot of money, they will need to buy more things or they will need to use their money to expand their business. And in the course of expanding the business, there will be options whether to invest in this or this. Maybe should we buy a land and build there or build another branch there? Or maybe we should buy a car so that workers can use it. There are, there are a lot of options that are going to be used. But then you can't just make those options just like that and go away. You can't make this option and be like, oh, maybe I feel like it will help the business. That, no, you can't do that. You have to go through a process. And that process is what we call investment appraisal. So how you choose between two options, not only two options, it could be three, four, five. I mean, even if it's just one, whether you are choosing to invest into this or not, that's what investment appraisal is. And there are two types of investment appraisal, the non-discount approach and the discount approach. The non-discount approach are the approaches that don't take into consideration time value of money, whereas the discount approaches take into consideration time value of money. Now, what is time value of money? We've actually done time value of money on this channel, so I guess you guys have a fair idea of it. So time value of money means that time can change the value of money. That's so. So if you put 10 CD right now, it won't change. The fiscal money won't change. But in three years time, you won't be able to buy what you can buy now. That's what is time value of money. So for the non-discount approach, assuming in year one, maybe this year, you're making 10,000 CDs. Year two, you're making 13,000 CDs. Year three, you're making 15,000 CDs. Those cash flows that you're making or those profits that you're making are not going to be the same now. But the non-discount approach methods do not care about that. I and mean, once you're making the money, that's all. They don't change the future values to present value. But for the discount approach, they do that. So now the first one we are going to look at under the non-discount. So you are going to start with the non-discount approaches. So let me write it. Non-discount approaches. So like I said, the non-discount approaches, they don't take into consideration time value of money. So the first one we are going to look at is the payback period the payback period and this is actually the easiest among them so the payback period is all about how fast you are going to get your money you get it so assuming i have two investments i want to go maybe i'm deciding to either buy a land or buy a car and i feel like maybe the land will give me money faster than the car then that one i'm going to choose the land over the car so let's say i have fifty thousand cities here and the car is fifty thousand cities the land is also fifty thousand cities but in two years' time, I would have made my 50,000 CDs if I purchased the land. But then for the car, it will take about four years or five years. Meaning straight away, I will have to go for the land because it will get me that my money faster. So payback approach doesn't look at any other things, any other factors, just how fast you are going to get your money. Do you get it? So now I'm going to take a question under payback approach for us to understand this very well. Okay, so for the first question under payback approach, we have two investments. And they're asking us which investment should we take. So in other words, they're asking us which investments will give us our money faster. Do you get it? If I've invested 100,000 CDs, which investment will give me my money faster? That's what payback approach is looking at. So let's take the question. So we have the year. Year. Then we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the years are 4. Then we have investment A. So this is one investment. Then we have 100. Then we have 20. Then year two, we have 60, which are there. Then year three, we have 40. Then year four, we have 50. So these are the values for investment A, more like the cash flows. Yeah. Then investments B, we have 200, we have 40, we have 100, then 20 and 80. 
So these are the values they've given us, and they're asking us between investment A and investment B, which investment should we go for? So we are using the payback approach. So they are basically asking us that which investment will get us our money faster, investment A or investment B. So this is the question they've given us, and they're asking us which investment should we go for between investment A and investment B, which one should we go for using the payback period or the payback approach? So when they give you a question like this, they're just asking you which investment will get you your money the fastest. And the value is attached to year zero. So the year you have zero, one, two, three, four. And when you see year zero, it means the values there are what you invested. So this one is 100. If it's CDs, it means you invested 100 CDs for investment A. Year B, so you have 200. That's why it's in brackets. Even if it's not in brackets, once it's year zero, it means that's what you invested. Then year one, 20. It means in year one, the first year, you got 20 CDs. Year two, the second year, you got 60 CDs. Yeah, three, you got 40 cities. That's what it means. So they're asking us between these two investments, which one should we choose? In other words, which one will get us our money the fastest? And to do that, we are going to work for them separately. You don't work for them together. So we'll work for investment A, how long it will take. Then we'll also work for investment B, how long it will take. The shortest one is what you are going to take using the payback approach. So let's work for investment A. So for investment A, we have the year. So the year we have zero. One, two, three, four, four years. Then we have the cash flow. So I can just do it CF. So this is investment A. Investment A. So I can do the cash flows. So year zero. So year zero is how much you invested. So this one is not part of how much you are getting. It's just how much you invested. So zero. Then in year one, we got 20. If a city is 20 cities, year two, 60 cities. Then year three, we got 40 cities. And year four, we got 50 cities. So now we are going to see which one is going to get us 100 cities faster, or which one is going to get us our money faster. If you invested 100 cities in it, so how long is it going to take us to get 100 cities back? And now I'm going to calculate for the cumulative cash flow. The cumulative cash flow. So the cumulative cash flow just shows us our balance at every point in time or how much we are left to get out of the 100 CDs. So now let's start with year one. In year one, we got 20 CDs. Remember, we invested 100 CDs, zero, which is year zero. So year zero is how much we invested. We got 100 CDs. In year one, we got our first cash flow, which is 20 CDs. Meaning out, out of the 100 CDs, we got 20 CDs. Meaning we are left with 80 CDs, right? So 100 minus 20. So for the first year, getting 80. You get it. So how much you are left to pay? That's all. We have 100 CDs. Now in the first year, we've got a cash flow of 20 CDs. So 100 minus 20, we get an 80. Now year two, we've got 60. By year one, we've already got a 20. And now we are left with 80 CDs to pay in year one. But in year two, we've got 60. So it's going to be 80 minus 60. And when you do 80 minus 60, you are going to get 20. So it means now out of the 100 CDs we've invested, you are left with 20 CDs to recover. And in year three, we got 40 CDs. But take a look at something. Remember, we are left to 20 CDs to recover. We've got 100 CDs. We've invested 100 CDs. In the year one, we got 20 CDs. Meaning it was left with 80 CDs for us to get. Now, we've, the year two, we got 60 CDs. So 60 plus 20, 80. Meaning 80, 100 minus 80 is now left to change this for us to pay. By year three, we got 40 CDs, which is more than how much you are left to get. We only need 20 CDs. That's all. We only need 20, we've got 20 and 60, which is 80. Now we only need 20 CDs. The payback approach only looks at how fast you are going to get your money, not the profits after the time. You get it. So once you get your 100 CDs, that's all. And yet we've got 40 CDs, which is more than the 20 CDs we need. When you have a situation like that, it's going to be how much you are supposed to get over how much is there or how much you got that particular year times 12. I'm saying that as you may get to a point where in any particular year you are getting more than you actually have to get. It's going to be how much you have to get over how much is there or how much you got that particular year times 12. So here like this, we needed only 20 CDs. So it's going to be 20 over how much we got that year, 40 times 12. And this 12 represents months or this particular part represents months. So when we do it and we are getting 6. So what this means is that year 1, we got 20 CDs. Now we are left with 80 CDs for us to pay. Year two, we got 60 CDs. So 60 plus 20, 80. Now we are left to 20 CDs for us to pay. By year three, we needed 20 CDs to make our 100 CDs, but we got more than 20. 
So we did 20 over 40 times 12, and now we are getting 6. So this means that it is going to be 2 years and 6 months. What we are solving here was for the number of months. You get it. In that whole year, you are going to get 40, 40 CDs. But we don't need the 40 CDs. We just want to get back 100 CDs. So it's going to be how much you are supposed to get over how much is left or how much you are making that year times 12. And what you get is going to be represented in months because it's not going to take the full year for you to make that 20 CDs. The full year is giving you 40 CDs. But then we only need to get 20 CDs. So we are going to do 20, which is what is left, over what is actually here, what you are making that year times 12 and you get 6. So when you are done, you calculate. You start from the first year. So one, so we have one year, the second year, two years. And what you get here, six months. So here is years and here is months. So you can do it six months. So under it, you just write, therefore, the payback period. I'm, I'm using PP for payback period, right? If you are writing an exam, you have to do its payback period. It's two years. Two years, six months. That's what it means. You get it. So one, two, then we calculate for the number of months. This has to get what is left. Then we get two years, six months. So this is for investment A, meaning that for investment A, it will take us two years, six months to get a hundred CDs. That's what it means. So for investment B, if we solve it and it takes, let's say, three years, four years, it means it's longer than the two years, six months. Therefore, we should consider investment A. But if we solve for investment B and it's taking us, let's say, one year, just two years, one and a half years, it means it's less than this two years, six months. We are just going to take the one that gives us money the shortest time. That's all. So now let's do for investment B. So investment A is two years, six months. Investment A, two years, six months. So let me just write the investment A on the board so that we don't forget. Investment A. A. The payback period is two years, six months. Now, we are going to do the same thing for investment B. You can try it at home, but then let's solve it together. So for investment B, we also have the year. And we have zero to four. Zero, one, two, three, four. Then we have the cash flow. So this is for investment B. So for investment B. So for investment B, let's look at the cash flows. So we invested 200 CDs, which is year zero. So year zero doesn't represent any year, just how much we invested. So we invested 200 CDs. Now year one, we got 40, around 40 CDs. Year two, we got 100 CDs. Then year three, we got 20 CDs. And year four, we got 800 CDs. 800 CDs. Now we find for the cumulative cash flow. Cumulative cash flow. So now we invested 200 CDs. And in year one, we got 40 CDs. Meaning we are going to do 200 minus 40, which is 160. So our cumulative cash flow for year one is going to be 160. We need that out of the 200 CDs, you are left with 160 CDs to pay. That's what it means. Now in year two, we got 100 CDs. In year one, we got 40. So 100 plus 40 is 140. Now we got 140. Do you get it? So you can just do 140 or 200 minus 140. Or you can also do it 100 minus 160. Because now we are left with 160 to pay as of year one. And year two, we've got another 100 CDs. So you can subtract the 100 CDs from the 160, which is 160 minus 100. Then you are getting 60. What this means is that now we are left with 60 CDs to pay. Do you get it? And year three, we got 20 CDs. Year three, we got 20 CDs. We are left with 60 CDs to pay. So we do 60 minus 20. Now we have 40 CDs. Now it means it's left with 40 CDs for us to get out of the 200 CDs. 40 CDs for us to get. But in year four, we got 800 CDs, which is way more than what we need. We just need 40 CDs. When you add 100 plus 20, you get 120 plus 40, you get 160. And we need 200 CDs. So we just do 200 minus 160. Now we are left with 40 CDs to pay. And 800 CDs, we got 800 CDs in year four. But it's way more than what we want. It's way more than what we want. And I said that when you have a situation like this, you are going to date how much you actually want or how much is left for you to get out of the 200 over how much you are getting that year times 12. 
which represents the number of months. So how much we actually need to get is 40, which is right here. Now we are left with 40 cities to get a 200 over how much you got that year, which is 800 times the number of months. So now let's do it on the calculator and see what we get. So 40 over 800 times 12. We have 0 0.6. So here it means 0 0.6 months. So, so it means for the whole year, I'm going to get 800 cities, but it's obviously not going to take the whole year to get the same 40 cities. So when you calculate it, you get 0 0.6 months. So now to get a payback period, it's going to be 1, 2, 3. So this is 3 years and the number of months here. So now the payback period is 3 years. 0 0.6 months this is for b so it means for investments b our payback period is three years 0 0.6 months remember our investments a our payback period was two years six months so straight away based on the payback period you are supposed to accept investment a because the payback period is shorter that's all so that's basically it about payback period the one that gives you the shorter time or the one that gives you the shorter time to recover your money you're going to accept that one that's basically it's about payback period so that's basically it about payback period. The one that gives you the shorter time to recover your money, you accept that one. That's all.